So good afternoon and uh, welcome. This is a solution focus in organizations, uh, a conversation with, and the conversation today is with Tara Gretton and Katrine Berger, who have recently set up solution focus in schools. We've also got Kathleen Hankowski, who is formerly more, more normally known as Katty. Um, and so Katty is going to be interviewing them about the setting up. And we also have Anna Julia Zabo, who is up a mountain somewhere in Switzerland, who is uh, going to uh, also be interviewing as well. So we've got two interviewers, two interviewees, and uh, from four different countries. Very nice, very, very European, I have to say. So on that note, I'm going to um, switch off my video, and then uh, you won't see me in the video for the rest of this. Okay, so if you need my help, just shout. If you need me to stop the video at any time, just let me know. Otherwise, Katy, Anna, Yulia, Katrine, and Tara, it's all over to you. So first of all, thank you, John Brooker. Thank you, John, for introducing this. Um, John is soul and motor of SFIO, and it's lovely that he um, opened this conversation. And the issue for today is your wonderful idea and initiative um, to uh, set up a network and um, link people with each other. Anna, Julia and me were fortunate to be there from the first um, moment of happening on. So we are very curious, what would be your today's comment if you are asked about the aim Yeah, Catherine. So, first of first of all, maybe I, uh, I I'm I hope my English is good enough doing this interview, but um, I might miss some words, and then I would ask Katalin or Anna Julia in German, so they might help me. Um, my the the aim I I see for the network is um, to share what's working already in schools in a solution-focused way in different countries um, and to encourage people to, um, to start uh, with solution focus or to, to let it grow. Yeah, just to, to stay connected and to get ideas. Mm -hmm. So that's my aim and uh, we, we gave the impulse for it, um, but it's now, it's, it's, um, there's no roof on top of it, kind of, no organization. It's, it's, um, it's a free uh, kind of yeah. network. Yeah. Yeah, and I would, I would obviously echo what Catherine says. And also I think it's, you know, sometimes when you're working in, in schools um, using the solution-focused approach and working independently, it can feel uh, quite lonely, you know? And when Catherine and I have spoken at, uh, conferences and connected and shared our experiences and our love of SF in schools. I think that's what really inspired us to, we, you know, we need to be having conversations with more people um, and to connect people and to also sort of give strength to our, our SF community in schools um, and to be a greater resource in order to have more people working in more schools globally. <laughs> I just made this note, more people, and <laughs> <laughs> more, <laughs> beautiful. And um, it happened like some weeks ago. Hmm? The first coming out of the network was on the SF World Day, sort of May 2020. And I, I would like to ask you about signs of progress, you already can see to what this more people more easily get in touch with SF in schools. What do you already see emerging? Well, I think what was, sorry, Catherine, was really exciting to notice was the level of interest. And I think Catherine and I were just really excited by people's response and people's um, openness and willingness to engage. So those first, I don't know, it just felt like a real buzz and was something that was wanted and hoped for. Um, and 
yeah, we hosted an initial Zoom and then had another meeting on World SF Day. And yeah, the interest in it and the uh, uh, the amount of people that joined us and that joined the group was yeah, first really early signs that this was something that people wanted and wanted to be a part of. Catherine would add to that. Um, when I think of um, about the be early beginning in, on the conference in in uh, Italy, it was a, um, it was a how was it called um, open space mm -hmm. um, workshop, and I think we were maybe five six people in the school topic uh, group. Mm -hmm. uh, Tara and me, we started this group and uh, and others joined and it was the beginning and uh, our, our try to um, to start it now as an online uh, event was kind of different countries, maybe 20 people or 24, 25, something like this. Mm -hmm. And then I, I was really astonished about the, the wish to meet once a month. Uh, because I know it's quite a lot to meet every month mm -hmm. and to prepare a meeting every month and to prepare a topic uh, to discuss about, but they really wanted it. So I said, okay, I, I would also help to, to let, get this done. Um, and there are already lots of, um, of um, signing in for the next mm -hmm. meeting. I think it's, it's maybe 30 people are there. Oh, no, I, didn't that. Wow. I didn't count them, but it's always co coming in my email uh, account. <laughs> so I, I'm hoping that, uh, that people um, keep on going in this uh, um, network uh, together, also when Corona is over. Yeah. Because at the moment, people are more locked at home, so they might be more interested in connecting. Mm. Uh, I, I, I have a big wish that, uh, that there would be more people um, sharing material on mm. our um, platform on Facebook. Mm. Um, that's, uh, I'm not quite sure if, it, uh, if, it, if they, people dare already. Mm. Some, some of you shared already something. Mm. <laughs> so I'm, I'm hoping that there are, only, that there, there are tiny little things uh, being shared, not the mm. big... Uh, the big revolution in the in the school only also mm -hmm. the little one things mm -hmm. so this is a, a hope i i tr i would li like to encourage the next time and on the 3rd of june mm -hmm. um encourage everybody to share these two things also what you have anna you yet uh, you have also so nice little um things to tell <laughs> what you, what you're doing with the pupil um mm -hmm. And it's it's all it's mostly it's the inspiration in these little things. Uh, for example, I had a I, I was talking with a teacher yesterday, and I said, oh, there was a Swiss lady talking about um, this uh, book for for the strength of children. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, it was I think it was Alice or you um, talking about this, and she was really inspired only listening to the word. I didn't, need, I didn't need to tell her something about because she was in her own kind of film. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and we need more of this little encouraging things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And I, do, I think because the solution focused community is so giving, isn't it? It's such a sharing community. So I think it's actually, you know, if you hit on something that works and that's useful and that you're using in schools to share that and for more people to be using it, it's really, yeah, it's a real gift. Yeah. You set up this network with a very, very um, low um, uh, herd to get in. So it's very easy to find you on social media, very easy to, to join. And uh, I think it links, links wonderfully to this aim of involving more people. Having Anna Julia here, she's someone who's on both sides. She's in school and making a solution-focused school practice. And she's a SF practitioner as well, uh, introducing solution focus to others. Um, Anna Julia, what do you see as a chance in this network? Um, it is this uh, connecting and sharing, I think, because um, also when I was there on the 3rd of, of May, uh, 
it's already inspiring to just hear a story from someone else and to tell your story again um, or for the first time. And, and this little story you tell, uh, it makes you realize what you are doing and um, it makes someone else, it might inspire someone else to do something too. So I think this, this uh, and these are also signs of progress that we already see. Um, even if we only meet for one hour uh, with this aim and this goal to, to share uh, stuff and to connect with each other. And that already happened on the 3rd of, of May and is going to happen again um, on the 3rd of June. So it's really, um, this is already for me a, a big sign that, that this is already working. I would like to spot, uh, put a spot on what you do in um, schools uh in yourself just to make your um portrays uh who initiated this network also a bit um more clear for listeners um but maybe before um this network this connecting people this sharing culture also for the topic sf in schools what might this lead to what is the difference you want to make I, I mean, personally, kind of the difference in schools. Um, I mean, I think the sharing of, I was just thinking about what Anna Julia was saying about the sharing of, of stories and what people have managed to achieve already. And I think that gives hope to, to people of, and possibility, you know, that actually by listening to other people, by sharing resources, but by sharing stories, um, then we can really see as SF practitioners what's possible in schools. Mm -hmm. And the more stories we have, then we can take those stories into the schools and share them with them too, as well as each other. Mm -hmm. And I think that gives real potential and real validity to the solution focused approach and what's possible in schools. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I'm um, I'm hoping to um, um, to spread the idea of solution focus or the, the main core of a solution focus um, because I think if you are if you know what is uh, what is the core mm. then you can create a lot of different methods out of this and I think this is uh, what what children and teacher and everybody likes the most to to create something by themselves and to be proud of the mm -hmm. result mm -hmm. and to share it and to get inspired maybe but uh, but also in this creation process mm -hmm. and i think solution focus is very uh, well uh, it, it's it fits mm -hmm. for this because mm -hmm. it's it takes a while to really get into the thinking of solution focus i think mm -hmm. it's easy to to listen to and to understand but it's it's hard to really get it in, inside you mm -hmm. um and if as soon as you have it i think um you can create you can you can use all the methods you had before just mm -hmm. change them a bit and make it solution focused mm -hmm. And and, yeah. um, and it's so, so I'm not I'm not keen of uh, of collecting methods and having a book everybody get mm. everybody gets for the school library mm. <laughs> because it's uh, then I I would I think um, there would would be something missing mm. teacher they would they, they don't want to read lots of books and uh, think about oh I have to do it like this oh did I do it wrong. So it's it's more the culture I would like to oh I have the idea the ABC of solution focus <laughs> I create something and sometimes it works sometimes it doesn't or it works other in another way than I thought <laughs> and then to share and to, to have joy with this and and be friendly with the mistakes yeah that's um, something I would really like to have with this uh, network and I think. Um, it's also what the schools want to. They mm -hmm. they want to um, they want to create own um, ways. Like like the teacher yesterday, she only wanted this one word. She didn't she didn't ask me. Oh, where can I find a book about this? Mm -hmm. <laughs> she already created her own um, useful misunderstanding of yeah. what that could be. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really agree with that. I think it's. You know something I've noticed about sort of delivering training 
in solution based training in schools is that it's about making it accessible and and relative and that schools that, that you know teachers have so much to do they have such busy jobs and they often have lots of training and I think you know I totally agree with what Catherine is saying when you're kind of really um, sharing the assumptions and the the mindset of SF then I think that really kind of gets to the heart of people you know and resonates with them and then you know if they've got that then as Catherine says they can make use of it in in their own ways because it's so versatile once you've got the assumptions and that mindset. Mm. Suppose you too, uh, with the network and with everyone else working with it and uh, going with it, uh, all these dreams and hopes uh, will become possible and are possible. And um, suppose this already happened and it's already uh, easier for people in schools and it's already uh, normal for people in schools to work in an SF way. What would be a first uh, little sign you would notice so that you would uh, realize, oh, this is actually made possible? I think for me it would be seeing other people maybe not SF practitioners maybe teachers coming into the network and and young people which well I think kind of started that a little bit but so um yeah broadening that interest and that yeah the the sort of SF word is on the street you know and it's kind of working then more people um, other than solution focused practitioners would be joining the network with great interest. Any sign Katrin you would notice when you walk into a school or something I don't know. Um, I think a, so a very important difference would be um, if I would um, sit together in a, in a kind of a round table with teacher, parents, sometimes the pupil, um, and they would talk about the topic because, uh, because um, what is the reason for the invitation? <laughs> and they would uh, talk about progress and the, the preferred future and uh, things happening which are, which are good. And it's kind of a common uh, language together. Mm. So parents are more, uh, they are closer with the school. They like to be there and to, to think about the, the abilities the child still needs to learn or to, to, um, to grow stronger. Mm. So it's more the, it's more the, the, the talking together. What, or when I listen to a teacher talking to each other, asking for help because they, they need something and the other person just uh, kind of a respectful conversation. Could also be a um, teacher to the pupil talking in a way like this. Nice question. Thank you. Mm. Who's invited into your network? Who should feel, I want to? Everybody who's connected mm. with schools and, and works with or in schools. Mm. So it's, um, we, we've put it on the Facebook group. Um, mm. it's, it might also be a parent very, uh, mm. who's very interested in um, solution focused and the school life and supporting school as a parent. It can be a pupil like uh, you brought Tara from mm. like pupils uh, trained in SF, it's great to have them. Mm -hmm. Or um, teacher, social worker from, from school, or counselor, um, head teacher, or, um, or people from university um, looking at the topic from this side. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all of you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Good. Uh, maybe I didn't ask the most important question about the network before we go to your fee or your achievements with SF in schools. Is there anything else I should have? Yeah, I think that's good. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Because it's a, uh, it's um, 
quite a logical thing that it was you who initiated this. Um, you both are working with schools, in schools, um, and um, I, I um, to make this round a bit full, I also would like to invite Anna Julia to give a hint of how you work in schools, what, what the difference you made and make already there. Can you tell just an example, please? Your favorite example. Today's favorite. Um, go first, I go first. Uh, so, I mean, one that's particularly at the forefront of my mind um, is a secondary. I work mainly in secondary schools, so I do work with primary schools as well. Um, but there's a secondary school and an academy trust, which is lots of schools under the same sort of umbrella uh, that where I work. They um, so initially they had a their pastoral manager was trained. I trained her to be SF practitioner and she fell in love with SF so much that she kind of went back to the school and was real champion for, for the approach and, um, and has from that invited me to come in and be uh, there two days a week providing um, solution focused practice to their sixth form students. And as a result of that, they wanted staff to be trained as well. And, um, and it's just kind of based on the conversations that we've been having already, just and really building on what Katrin says, that sort of them really getting the, the, the core sort of assumptions and that mindset and, and then really running with it and, and adopting the SF approach in a way that really suits them as a school and really sits with their values. And they've got real strong values about being young person led and also about a real sort of promoting emotional well-being and that being a, a real priority for them. So and they see SF as the perfect approach to be able to, to do that. So, yeah, we trained a lot of staff, 70 staff in the school. Um, with a view to change uh, training more and now they're starting to kind of write it within their policies and we're sort of on track to to being an, an SF school so um, yeah that's really exciting and um, something that I've hoped for <laughs> yeah so that would be mine Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Can we just take for a moment, um, if Anna Julia would walk through this school on a normal day, how would she recognize, I don't know if it must be Anna Julia, but someone uh, who just walks <laughs> in, how does the difference show up um, in this organism, in this community of people? Yeah, it's very interesting because we were asking ourselves this question yesterday as we were uh, making some preparations. But yeah, I mean, I think it's got to be evident in the students and um, that, that real focus on, on what they can do and not what they can't. And that you'd notice that the, the teachers are sort of good role models for that. And then... Uh, the, as a result of that, the students are yeah mirroring that and doing the same. So that uh, just that real culture. And interestingly, the school does have a really big heart, and you can really feel that sort of respect. And I think now taking on sort of solution, well, the solution focused approach was the perfect fit for what was working already. So it just built on that. So I think yeah, and Yulia would feel. That and she would notice that greater focus on what the students can do, not what they can't. Mm. And there is this wonderful place in every school, the, the room where the teachers gather. Mm. What would I or Anna Julia here see a difference there and the, within and among teachers? <laughs> in the staff room? <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh, that's a really good question. Yeah, I think again, they would be, they wouldn't be defining children by their problems. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it would be a real, the conversations of possibility and hope rather than, oh, you know, sort of being problem focused. And I think that would just have a, a, the difference that it would have on their own well being as well. And that's something that teachers have reported, or, you know, fed back from doing solution focused training that it not only 
fits with and is useful in their teaching, but it actually has a personal positive, useful impact on their own well-being and that they're able to use that in their own lives as well. So I think they're just happy, <laughs> more relaxed. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Tara. Um, Katrin, I'm curious about your current favorite example, uh, your work in schools as organizations. Mm -hmm. I work, in the, my main job at the moment is um, working as a counselor for schools in, in Bremen, Germany, Northern Germany. And I'm mainly doing um, kind of, um, classroom coaching, wow coaching, and um, support groups like Su Yang uh, developed. Um, so a very solution focused way of uh, dealing with uh, different um, problems. Um, that's what I love the most at the moment. And um, it, it beside the the work for the um, for Bremen for the Bremen schools. I'm um, I'm self-employed, and in this um, in this part of my work um, of my my job, I can work with the whole um, organization as well. Not only because of one pupil having problems and offering solution focus. Uh, so in myself being self-employed, I. I had also um, some work with um, the whole staff of the, of the school, or of the kindergarten as well, also with parents. And um, I, that's what I learned also from Sue Young because she, she was here in Bremen and we worked with the school together. Uh, and in a way I applied this, uh, this, the way she did it to different settings. Um, it's it's a kind of, um, um, thinking with the different groups of this organization about the best version of, of the organization mm -hmm. with the parents with the pupils with the staff with the head teacher and sometimes also with the other people working in the schools like the facility manager or how, how you call mm -hmm. the, the person who's cleaning the, mm -hmm. the, the mm -hmm. courtyard and everything um, so to collect the, the idea of the best version of the school um, and then to, um, to think about what's happening already in this way. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I love to do this in small groups. So there, there are maybe groups of five or, uh, or six people sitting together talking about the best version and afterwards collecting it together also to, to look for the, um, what is happening already, what is the next little step they would like to see. Um, and then they are, after a whole day, uh, for example, I was in a, in a primary school in Bremen uh, and we worked the whole day. It was a Saturday. Normally they are off on this day. So they, it was a, 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 the whole staff there, for, 45 or 50 uh, teachers. Mm -hmm. um, and they were not tired in the end so they were they went out there and said oh that's that's strange I could work more <laughs> and that's my what what really makes me happy to, to mm -hmm. see um, it's possible to work in a dialogue which with, with each other that um, that you get strength out of it and you you feel like 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 flying with a, like you are, you are today. <laughs> <laughs> and it's possible and also possible to, to work in this way with children. For example, when I'm doing support groups, it's for me, it's the same to, to listen to the children with their beautiful ideas. Mm -hmm. It makes me feel light and I, I would like to have more of it. Mm -hmm. And if we have this in, in schools or over, they, they, the teacher will love to work. Mm -hmm. It's not why when I, when I go in schools nowadays, half of the teachers say, oh, it's, it's, it's so, such a hard job. Uh, they, they don't love it. 
Mm. So they, they can they can earn a lot from from solution focus, I think. Mm. Maybe to give us one or two uh, little examples of when you talk about a whole staff uh, who um, imagines a place where they want to work, or when you talk about the kids um, in support groups having wonderful ideas. Can you share one or two of those ideas that amazed you, that you didn't come up with on your own, or you didn't think of, and then you were amazed that the kids or the staff would come up with it? Mm -hmm. mm. Um, maybe I take a example from a support group. Um, the support groups were uh, invented for for children um, who, who were bullied, yeah, who, mm -hmm. or others thought they would be that they would be bullied. Mm -hmm. um, and I did such a group uh, for a child who was more in a she was very unhappy, but she was more um, like um, saying others what to do, like a do dominant way of interaction. Yeah. So she was alone, but she was not very. She wasn't. Uh, she wasn't hurt by others. She was hurting others. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because of her un unhappiness, maybe. Um, <laughs> And I thought, oh, but I, I still think she needs some support. So I had a support group for them, uh, for this child. And they were so nice with their um, observation, what, what the little girl would, uh, would make happier. For example, um, one girl said, uh, ah, I think she would be more happy if she would would know how to, uh, how how if she if she could cope with um, losing in a game. If she would if if she would learn this, uh, then she would be more happy. Said, wow! So it was really a, a very um, careful observation. Mm -hmm. And I said, oh, how how sh could she learn it in a way that she's happy and how that it feels good? Yeah, we will play with her. And maybe we uh, we just swap all the time. Then she she can uh, decide what to play, and then another person, and all these little rules. Mm, beautiful. <laughs> and they and they really got got it uh, that she she loved to uh, to make connection to children in a better way. Mm -hmm. So it's not only for the children uh, who are uh, afraid, scared, uh, bullied. <laughs> It's also for the children uh, um, in an, who act in an aggressive way, maybe. Mm -hmm. So this was uh, it's very touching. Yeah. Thank you. And in one 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 little thing more, uh, one little boy, also in a support group. He said after the group meetings, he said to me, um, "Do you go to?" To the north of Bremen as well, and, as, and I said no. I normally I don't. Oh, my mother is living there. And I said oh, yes. She I think she needs a support group. Oh, oh that's uh, oh. So he, he he realized how it how it worked for the child they were a support group for, and he thought of oh my mother needs one. <laughs> This reminds me a story from Hungary, I might tell, but before I do that, Anna Julia, um, talking about experiences in schools as organizations, you are every day there as a teacher and you are every day there also as an SF practitioner. What's your favorite story right now? Right now? Um, <sighs> I've got many. <laughs> I'm very amazed by my children, um, the children in my class. And uh, I enjoy this SF magic, um, or I've been starting to enjoy it even more because I think I can watch it. Um, I've been working with them for two years with my class. They're 10 years old now. And um, so I feel like at the moment I can lay back a little and enjoy what's happening because there's so much already happening. Um, for example, last Monday, I had two kids uh, telling me, oh, Miss Abu, can we be teachers today? 
Um, and I said, okay, tell me what, what you were thinking about. And um, they planned a lesson about the Romans, um, because that's our um, theme at the moment, so Roman empires and so on. So they planned a lesson about that. And um, it was so uh, touching to watch. Uh, I, I gave them the platform. They, they, got, they asked the class whether they could have an hour, and, and they agreed that they would let them do an hour with them um, and uh, they took over and it was uh, when, when Tara before spoke of role models it was so uh, touching for me to see what they would take from me or as I would see because I was the role model so they would take these, um, uh, this, this little bell that I would take and took it in front and then they started speaking <laughs> and stuff like that they would take over and then make their own um, mm -hmm. make their own lesson and I was amazed at how the kids were listening to them and they they made groups that I wouldn't have dared to make because they would have said no I'm not gonna work with her on him and they made okay you 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 and they stood up and nodded and went to work for half an hour and I was amazed so um that is one of my stories at the moment mm -hmm. Beautiful one, and I would like to follow you from the classroom towards uh, staff room. Uh, what uh, signs of your influence can you already see uh, among colleagues? Um, um, yeah, in staff room. Mm -hmm. um, I've been doing a lot of wow uh, in the last two years, uh, having uh, people come to my classroom and um, doing wow about every second week um, because it was nice for me to get my focus back on and then for the kids anyways and also for the people who came they enjoyed it also um, so i had uh, at one point i had a teacher um, who said oh can i maybe borrow your dad to come do wow with me and my class also um, so this me telling about it and then realizing uh, that it, it makes a difference and then coming and, and asking whether they could actually, or what actually I was doing. Mm -hmm. but that is one. And I have a very nice uh, headmistress who is also um, interested in, in keeping, like also what, what Tara and, and Katrin said, that, that it helps teachers to, um, to have a lighter day and have a lighter mm -hmm. uh, job and enjoy their jobs more. So for example, we have a glass in our staff room that says, um, have I been, um, um acting careful with myself today mm. and if you have you can put the stone in so we're collecting <laughs> stones in the teacher's staff room and this is also a, a, a always a start of a conversation when someone puts it in and said oh what did you put it in for and then <laughs> good idea mm. a beautiful one yeah mm. Uh, and if I would not ask the next question what would you share any of you based on what we heard so far Say it again. If you would, if you would ask the question, mm, and of course I can come up with another a new intelligent question, huh? mm -hmm. but maybe I don't do that. Uh, what uh, is so inspiring from what we were talking about that you would like mm -hmm. add on or comment on? I think I think the thing that I've kind of noticed about what each of us have shared is really a, what I'm noticing about the children and young people how wise and you know how they've just got such great ideas and so insightful and and I think that's something that's you know really important for us to sort of notice and to build on you know and that they as we kind of go into schools and share SF and and you know invite schools to to take it on and you know the culture and that that children and young people are to, to be such a big part of that and you know and something I was thinking about recently was you know, I've trained some students in the school um, to to do peer-to-peer -peer support with SF and and then I'm thinking actually rather than me training more students they should be training the, the you know the other students um, so really giving them that sort of sense of um, ownership and responsibility and yeah because as we've each described they're just so wise and insightful and yeah so that would be my observation yeah. I'd like to add a bit onto the um, stuff um, the difference between the, the stuff as you said Anna Julia um, you um, 
you notice that other teacher ask you to share your knowledge with with the other one so um for me is one um one very important difference would be um that that they that teacher would dare to share and dare to let somebody go into this into the class and see how they manage because mm -hmm. um i've spoken to some teacher in the past uh, saying oh it's it's really it's a kind of a culture where nobody dares to to show that the class uh, doesn't behave <laughs> because it means they are not professional mm -hmm. so that, that's what they said so, and, and if i imagine to work in such a in such a culture it's it, it would stress me a lot mm -hmm. so um if if we have solution focused i i would really see um teacher um, willing to share, mm. to show also to show uh, their work and their strength and their weakness as well. Mm. Um, and I, I um, some weeks ago before before the shutdown, I, uh, I uh, the whole uh, school invited me to to talk about wow coaching and um, support group. And as they heard about the uh, solution focused way to, to deal with things, they said, oh, it sounds um, that it's a good way to not to, to, um, to um, give always the feedback uh, with right and wrong. Mm -hmm. At the moment in Bremen, we have lots of this um, traffic light uh, systems like a red, green, uh, orange, green, and children need to uh, to behave in a good way otherwise they would be put on red that's uh, really it's it's common in primary schools um, and and all these teachers in the the stuff said oh that it sounds like something uh, we could do instead of this red orange green stuff yay <laughs> i think yeah it, it's really it's something it's it's mm -hmm. more um it's more uh, the joy of learning for me. Mm -hmm. yeah. I just I've seen you, Anna Julia, putting on your <laughs> uh, Catherine, your story of spreading support groups from Bremen to north of Germany, and this reminded me a story. Um, it's so different how solution focus can come to the schools. Mm -hmm. You are an example of an external uh, practitioner being called or, or addressing the school. Um, the, um, there is a, a, a school in South of Hungary where the headmaster had a solution focused um, education as she entered the school. And um, she introduced some things. One of them was um, the little stones of appreciation, mm. where the rule was uh, to spread them, so to circulate them instead of collecting them. Mm. And uh, there was a story, it's, it's a little town. So there was a story uh, which they could hear because the town was little enough. So the, the, the stories came back. And uh, the story came back from the next town where um, the dad of a pupil was working. So uh, somehow he got a stone from his son. So he gave him to one of his employees and this employee oh, wow. came home and gave it to his son. <gasps> his stories of I love that. Marvelous. And this is actually also my last question uh, I would like to raise before we finish. Um, in your wildest, wildest hopes, what all this might lead to in schools in the world, what you are working on? What might be the future of SF in schools? Every school in the whole world <laughs> is solution focused. <laughs> what would be the difference that would make? I think it's about, for me, it's so much about people's 
you know, thinking predominantly about the children and young people, their sense of self, you know, their sense of self-belief. You know, if we work with children in an SF way in schools, then the difference that it not only makes to them then in that moment and in their education, but to the possibilities for their future, you know, how they feel about themselves, how they feel about others. Um, and that, you know, that we show children that we see possibility in all of them, no matter what. Um, so, yeah, that would be what I would notice. I think if, if there would be a um, solution focused uh, in, in every school, um, it, it would be um, a setting where the potential of everybody is um, unlocked. Mm. Because um, fear makes everybody stupid. Mm. Uh, and if you have a kind of a interaction where there's no fear, where, where there's uh, be, curiosity for each other for uh, for learning and for uh, for the good interaction i think everybody would give the best and we we could solve the, the problems in, in the world very easily i think <laughs> it's a, 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 bit, a huge hope but um yeah it's it's my hope that's that we we go in this direction to um, to unlock the potential of everybody, of teacher, parents as well, um, and pupil, and build and and train uh, train everybody in cooperation. Mm. Anna Julia, favorite um, vision? Uh, uh, yes. Um, Mm -hmm. uh, having having uh, people, not only kids, not only staff, but uh, people on uh, this world, um, talking together in a in a respectful way and and asking questions, and um, in, when all the kids start learning that and and not learning but can experience that from the start, then they will be uh, and and go home and ask their parents the same questions or, or um, ask or listen in, in within their parents talks to for things that are already working and so on uh, then that's a, a very nice vision of, of a lot of uh, people listening to each other and um, being careful with each other yeah. well I ran out of questions Anything else from your side? What you wanted to raise? Thank you for having a, making the, it possible with yes. us internationally yes. to connect and, and share the stories. Yeah. yeah, and and thank you for your questions, Cathy. Mm -hmm. They were great questions. So thank you. Oh, thank you. Mm -hmm. Also, thank you to John and to Cathy for questions um, and. I, I would say, Tara, that we really want to encourage everybody to join the network for schools and to share materials on Facebook, on the Facebook group, um, yeah. and to just to think of other, other things one could do. It's only yeah. the start, and there can, can be so much more. Yeah, definitely. And um, SFIO's interest in, in your network shows me also uh, the, the huge potential of linking different initiatives. Mm -hmm. uh, SFIO is much more specialized in the organizational aspects and has also a huge uh, uh, amount of knowledge gathered uh, and also procedures um, to, to get uh, more reflection and more feedback also on, the, on one's work. So I'm so happy that through this interview, this uh, yeah. strong link happens. And, yeah. and for SFIO members, your network is viewable. And uh, through SFIN schools, maybe a bit SFIO's work gets also to be. Yeah. Yeah. And I was going to say thank you to John for um, showing, expressing an interest in, in working together because it's really exciting. I think to, to be able to do that. Yeah. 
Well, if I could just say, I, I, I think it was um, the best idea I've had in a long time was to speak to you guys and say, could we help you and, and could we do this interview? Because that was one of the most uplifting interviews I've ever heard. Aww. So um, <clears throat> if I put my SFIO hat on, and Katty, thank you for saying that, is um, I really see the synergy of schools learning from other organizations, learning from business, from health mm. services, etc. And other organizations learning from school. I wrote down loads of stuff here, and I'm just going to read a few of them out. Um, what could businesses do if they had people creating a culture of sharing ideas that work with joy? Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> substitute teachers and children here for people in organization. Teachers wanting to use SF for teachers to love to work. Mm. Not defining children by their problems. Mm. Child support groups, children making their own lessons, stone sharing to reflect happy moments. And, and your lovely story from uh, Hungary, you know, where you talked about the dad who got the stone and took it to work. Fantastic. Um, it goes on, giving children the opportunity to teach each other, uh, teachers willing to share their strengths and their weaknesses as well. And one I particularly loved, Katrine, because I used to hate it in my organization when I worked in an organization. Stuff we could do instead of the traffic light system. <laughs> um, I used to scream about the traffic light system. Um, <clears throat> and then your purpose and visions. Wow, it was really inspiring. Purpose and the vision of every school in the world is SF, where the potential of everybody is unlocked. Wow. Um, Fear makes everybody stupid if there was no fear but curiosity. What a lovely, lovely mm. thought. And then people talking together in a respectful way and asking questions. There is so much for other organizations to learn from schools. And, and so from my point of view, I just want it that, that we're all sharing. It's great that you've got a network of schools because clearly there's lots of lessons to learn from each other. But I'm very happy to put this into interaction and know that organizations could just learn just from an hour's worth of listening to, to all of you. So uh, thank you. Thank you, Katty, for a lovely interview and Anna Julia uh, for being two hats on, actually, for interviewing. Um, and, <laughs> uh, and I really saw that upbringing you talked about, about learning SF as you grew up. Some of those questions you were coming out with were were pure um, SF there. So um, yeah, thank you both of you for that. Katrine and Tara, thank you so much. That was really, really um, inspiring. Thank you. Thank and on you. That note, I'll um, say thanks again and have a wonderful weekend. Yeah, you Ooh. too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So again, cheers. Bye-bye. I'll stop recording. Okay. <laughs>